Next, let's find a polynomial function of degree 3 such that negative 2 is a 0 with a multiplicity of 3, meaning it occurs 3 times. So I have and the fact that when x is 1, negative 1, y is 4. So I have f of x equals a times x plus 2, because remember it's x minus rk, which in this case would give us x plus 2 cubed. And I know that when x is negative 1, y is 4. So I have 4 is a times negative 1 plus 2 cubed. So 4 is a times 1 cubed, which just means 4 is a. So that's my leading coefficient. So I have f of x is 4 times x plus 2 cubed. Now on an exam, I'll typically ask you to leave it in factored form. I don't want you to spend your time multiplying. Um, you've proven to me you can multiply. But I am going to go ahead and FOIL this out because it's always good FOIL practice. So I have f of x equals 4 x plus 2 cubed. I'm going to rewrite that out, right? We don't just distribute this cube, as tempting as it is. This is going to be f of x is 4 times x plus 2 times x plus 2 times x plus 2. And again, first thing I'm going to do is foil these last two, then distribute this in, and then distribute in the 4. So I have f of x. It's important to know real quick that that's just the order I prefer to do them in. As long as you distribute properly and FOIL properly and multiply properly and use all the distributive PEMDAS properties, you'll get the exact same answer. This is just the way I've found is simplest because um, then you typically don't end up multiplying a trinomial by a trinomial. And if you keep the constant out, you're typically multiplying smaller coefficients. So that's my little Miss Miller tip of the day. Okay. So I've got x times x is x squared, x times x is 2x, 2 times x is 2x, which gives me 4x, 2 times 2 is 4. Now I'm going to go ahead and distribute this x, so I have f of x is 4 times x cubed plus 4x squared plus 4x, and then I distribute my 2, plus 2x squared plus 8x plus 8. I combine like terms f of x is 4 times 1x cubed, plus I've got 4x squared and 2x squared, so that's 2, uh, oh, that's 6x squared. 4x and 8x, that gives me a 12x, and 8 is my constant. Now I can go ahead and distribute that 4. f of x is 4x cubed, plus 4 times 6, which is 24x squared, plus 4 times 12, which is 48x, plus 4 times 8, which is 32. Now let's work with some complex zeros. I'm going to find a degree 4 polynomial whose zeros are i, 7, and negative 1. The first thing you need to note is that we also are missing, let's switch to blue, negative i, right? Because I have to have, if I have i, I have to have its conjugate. So f of x is going to be x minus 7 times x plus 7 times x plus minus i times x plus i. So let's go ahead and FOIL these out. So f of x is, I'm going to multiply these two together, x times x is x squared plus 7x minus 7x plus Oh, minus 49. Notice how these are conjugates. I've got x minus 7 times x plus 7. So, of course, we remember way back from chapter 4 that these middle terms are going to cancel. I came to erase the 49 and make it a negative, and then I just wrote positive again. Not my best moment. Now, one thing to remember as we're multiplying complex numbers is that i squared is negative 1. x times x is x squared 
plus ix minus ix minus i squared. Well, minus a negative is plus a positive. So I get x squared plus 1 because this is x minus negative 1. I could rewrite it. Now let's go ahead and FOIL again. f of x is x to the fourth plus x squared minus 49x squared minus 49. So a polynomial whose given zeros would be i, negative i, 7, and negative 7 would be f of x is x to the fourth minus 48x squared minus 49. Friendly note though, right, that if I multiplied for a constant, it would have the same zeros. So this is not, it's a polynomial. This is not the only one. I could multiply by a constant. And that would stretch or shrink or compress, but it would still have the exact same zeros. All right. Last example of this section, I have to find a degree polynomial whose zeros are 3 and 4 minus i. Remember when I'm dealing with a complex zero, I also need its conjugate, so I also have 4 plus i. Note that when I'm asking you to do this on an exam or in the homework, it will tell you to leave factored or FOIL. So FOIL it out to get the polynomial in unfactored form. I'm going to go ahead and write this in factored form because I've got x minus 3 times x minus 4 minus i and x minus 4 plus i. I don't distribute that negative this time. Now I am going to go ahead and FOIL this out because FOILing out um, complex numbers can prove difficult because there is that extra step of i squared equals i. Also, technically, this is multiplying a trinomial by a trinomial, so that's what we're going to do first. So I have f of x is x minus 3 times, we're going to do this carefully, x times x is x squared x times a negative 4 is a negative 4x. x times i is a positive ix. Then I have minus 4x. A negative 4 times a negative 4 is a positive 16 minus 4i. So now I've just distributed the x and the 4. I have to distribute the i. So now I have minus ix minus uh, negative 4i becomes a positive 4i, and then negative i becomes negative i is negative i squared. So let's look at all the things that cancel out. So I've got x squared, then I've got minus 4x minus 4x, that's the only x terms because these ix's and this minus ix cancel, so I have minus 8x. Then I have a negative 4i and a positive 4i that cancel. That leaves you with 16 minus i squared. i squared is negative 1. So minus a negative 1 is a plus 1. So that gives me plus 17 times x minus 3. Now I go ahead and distribute again. f of x is x cubed minus 8x squared plus 17x minus 3x squared plus 24x minus 51. Yes, 51 is a number that's not prime. It's divisible by 17 and 3. Freaks everybody out. Um, so f of x, okay, at least everybody on TikTok. So f of x is x cubed minus 11x squared plus 17x minus 51. 